The MCU revealed more secret super soldiers, and there might be a whole Young Avengers roster forming with newbies from the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. BD here with your breakdown of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 2. I loved this episode. I'd like to start out with shout outs to head writer Malcolm Spellman and episode 2 writer Michael Castelline for this episode. Yeah, the MCU stuff of it all is great, but the way they're handling race issues in America, it's important, it's organic, it's all really well done. Hats off to the creative team for not shying away from very real issues. Now let's take a look at the new heroes this episode introduced. Boom! Just like that, Isaiah Bradley is in the MCU. He explained that he was part of an experimental program no one knew about. He fought Bucky in the Korean War, and after he fought for his country, he was thanked by being tossed in jail, all the while being kept a secret. So you're telling me that there was a black super soldier decades ago and nobody knew about it? This is similar to how it went down in the comics for Isaiah Bradley, a year after Steve Rogers' transformation. Bradley was experimented on with the Super Soldier Serum in a seven-issue event series in which Isaiah Bradley was considered to be the first black Captain America. I love how Sam Wilson pointed out, by the way, you don't need to preface black superheroes with the black adjective. So are you, like, black kid? I think that was a really cool and touching way to show that we don't need adjectives like that and hopefully we get to a point where this is all normalized. If you thought we were done with the Bradley family already, not so fast. Eli Bradley greeted Sam and Bucky at the door and if this kid will follow his young Avengers destiny from comics, he is on a path to become Patriot, the hero he is when he's introduced in 2005's Young Avengers number one. You know, the Young Avengers, they're being delivered by the dozen almost here in the MCU. The MCU pretty much has enough characters to fill a Young Avengers roster already. Patriot is introduced here. Wiccan and Speed were introduced in WandaVision. Cassie Lang is going to be a major player in the Ant-Man movie. Ironheart is on the way. Miss Marvel has a series later this year. Kate Bishop is ready to take the MCU's Hawkeye mantle. Even Joaquin Torres, the next Falcon, was just snuck into the Falcon of the Winter Soldier. Now, give me Amadeus Cho and Miles Morales. I will be a very happy camper. It seems like the Young Avengers are the future of this franchise. Now let's talk about John Walker. He really wants to team up with Sam and Bucky, huh? That's not happening. And he's questioned about whether or not he has jumped on top of a grenade. Actually, I have four times. This is a shout out to pre-Super Soldier Serum Steve Rogers doing just that in Captain America, the first Avenger. It's all connected, shut up. John Walker seems to have the accolades to be worthy of Captain America, but if he's anything like his comic book counterpart, it's as real as time travel is in Back to the Future. So Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit. John Walker in comics uses a bunch of propaganda to get himself to be the new Captain America and to spew all this propaganda. He's aided by none other than Lamar Hoskins. A word of advice then. Stay the hell out of my way. Hoskins, a.k.a. Battlestar, is introduced in this episode, and he's caps Bucky until in comics he learns Bucky is a demeaning term towards African Americans, so he goes by Battlestar. Both of these characters have ties to the power broker, the villain who gave them their superhuman physical abilities. Power Broker hasn't showed up in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier yet, but if you look at the credits, Power Broker is named in the animated portion, and the Flag Smashers seem to be running from such a character. And this makes a lot of sense. The Flag Smashers are hoarding some sort of vaccines. In the comics, my favorite phrase to say in these videos, this Power Broker guy experiments on people and makes them dependent on his drugs, all under the guise that the drugs are actually helping them. Theory time. I'm thinking John Walker and Battlestar might actually like this Power Broker guy, and the Flag Smashers, confirmed super soldiers on the run from Power Broker, are actually just trying to get away from him. The Flag Smashers might not turn out to be quote unquote good guys because they clearly have objectives that don't seem to line up with the rest of the world's best interests, but their thieving of vaccines might just be in hopes of making themselves independent of a villainous Power Broker. And we might be sympathetic from them, especially from Bucky's point of view by the end of the show. It'll be interesting to see if we dive into the John Walker and Lamar Hoskins backstory of it all, especially in flashback form, to see if they're manufacturing their own records. Because just like all of us, those characters are familiar with Sam and Bucky's backstories. John says to Sam that he and Bucky know really well that going at a threat divided is not a good move, which could be a reference to the Avengers fighting each other thanks to Zemo's intervention in Captain America Civil War, but it could also be about the Avengers not putting their differences aside to fight Thanos in the first place during Avengers Infinity War. Everyone involved in that movie argued that the Avengers would have beaten Thanos the first time around if they had just fought together. I feel like there could maybe be some hostility from the world toward the Avengers, over half of the population disappearing because they didn't just get the band back together and put their differences aside before Endgame after Zemo tore them apart going into Infinity War. I was 
us rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. Some think Zemo, who is seen at the very end of this episode, could turn out to be the power broker, but I'm not buying this theory. I think it's the aerospace engineer from WandaVision. This was a bad joke. I'm just kidding. Zemo's obviously Mephisto. El Diablo. Shout out to Bucky referring to himself as White Wolf. That's an alias he takes on in the comics and has been mentioned in the Black Panther post credit scene. We could see him become that in the MCU beyond this series if he's able to get his mind fully stable and be seen as a reliable superhero squad mate. This one may be tired of what? What Easter eggs and references did you catch in the Falcon and the Winter Soldier episode 2? Share your thoughts in the comment section or send them my way on Instagram at Brandon Davis BD and head over to comicbook.com slash Marvel for more updates. If you want to talk more, listen to the Phase Zero podcast. New episode is available on all major podcast platforms. I'm BD. I'll see you there. Mm -hmm.